weekend I was invited on two podcasts, and here's the outcome. What people, you know, got to say or their opinions and thoughts. Right. So that's how Be You Do You was inspired by, you know, by my own journey. Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. So I read your bio. So what brought you to Be You Do You? Was it that particular, your videos or... Oh, you oh, you talking for me to you know, I have a lot of people have issue with me being myself, right? Um yeah. like the yeah. way I express myself vocally, the way I make dress, the may just just me just being me, I always have a problem with people like accepting me for who I am, right? And I always have to go back to the uh, like, look, you can't you can't tell me how to be. Now, I know the the world has a perception of how people are supposed to behave and act. And I understand etiquette. And I have tons of that, right? But I'm going to always be true to myself. But I always find myself, unfortunately, have to explain my fucking self to fucking people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. I feel, this, I feel the same way. I'm already like, yeah, let's do an interview. <laughs> yes. Nope. Because that's what I find too. Like, society wants you to be a certain way, but your soul, that's not what your soul desires at all. Exactly. It's not. And you know, another thing that was interesting too, as I read yours, that you are a trans man. Yeah, I am. I am. Interesting. I was like, yo, this is going to be a really good conversation. This is going to be a really good conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like I said, that's how BG came about. It was inspired by my um, gender transition. I transitioned four years ago when I was 36. Mm. I'm 40 now. Okay. So I've had a lot of time to process uh, who who I am. So I know for a fact who I was born as, what I, what I was meant, who I was meant to be. It just took me a while to get there because... I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, mom still has certain beliefs around who you're supposed to be. So I struggled with that. So that's why it took me so long to take that leap because I was afraid of losing my family, my friends. And I felt like I was too old. I thought it was too old to, I thought I was too old to start over. Okay. So here I am. Right. Like, late. And congratulations to you. Like, like seriously. Yeah. For, Cause you know what? Uh, also, real shit on the outside looking in. I, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm being honest with you. For someone yeah. to, to say that they was born a certain way, but yet they feel something else. I, I don't understand it. However, I, re, I, re, I respect it. Because if that's how yeah. you feel, see, that's why back to that shit that I'm on. If that's how you feel, and like nobody has no, I can't like fathom whatever is going on with, with you, but whatever, but that's how you feel. So all I can do is respect it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's what it comes down to. It's about me understanding who I am. Mm -hmm. As long as I understand me, I could care less about what you understand and what you don't understand. It's not as, it's, this is not response to what you're saying. But if I focus so much on me, getting you to understand and, and you, you know, accepting me and invalidating me, then I'm some, I'm gonna waste my whole life doing that because what if that never comes? Then I'm gonna be miserable. Trying to fit into a, a box because someone doesn't understand. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. Cause I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand feeling like, okay, I don't identify as a female. So what, what is really going on? Right. Like I didn't I didn't understand it at all. Let me ask you another a quick question. Um so do who who do you date? Men or or females? Women. Women. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Cause growing up growing up, I envisioned myself marrying a woman. I envisioned myself having kids. I envisioned myself as the father. Like I didn't envision marrying a guy. Okay. So I guess that you know, I envisioned myself being I was a straight man. Okay. Yeah, that's how I saw myself. Okay. Until I started getting older and, and people pointing out like, no, you're not a boy. So 
you know, to be honest with you, I had told, had this conversation with some people, and I was like, yo, I have seen children. Now, mind you, due to the fact that I've been, yeah. this, in, been in the sex industry for a very long time, and I'm, I've always been a very observant person, and I have seen yeah. young kids that I was like, yeah, they gay. Yeah. Like, you you can, like, just the way that they move, like, or they, or they wasn't the traditional girl. He wasn't the traditional boy. So you, you can tell, I was like, okay. Like, I mean, I saw it. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, these people have and are, you know, recognized as with the LGBTQ community. Yeah. Yeah. I recognized it at a very young age. I just didn't have a label to put to it. Mm. I mean, I like labels in general, but I didn't have, there was no one else that was in my household that was gay. We, you know, gay, that didn't exist. So what are you talking about? You're gay or you're trans. Like that didn't exist. We didn't even talk about emotions, so let alone sexuality. Wow. I know, right? Let me tell you, that's so funny that we're talking about this. Wait, are we starting now? We're still in the... This is just a meet and greet. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. You know, the funny thing... ...includes our special guest, Real. Hey, Real, how are you doing today? Hey, Dr. Casey, I'm great. And yourself? Um, well, my name is Real. Um, I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. I live in New York. Uh, before I came to New York, I grew up, when, okay, this is like, we were in middle school. So I had some girlfriends. We was like, what would you do that you would want to tell your, your parents, right? So, um, I was like, mine was, I want to be an exotic dancer, right? So they said whatever they said. So whatever, moving forward, um, I moved to New York and yes, I became an exotic dancer, uh, and was very good at it and i don't know why people will be saying i want to keep my daughter off the pole when your daughter can make so much money but you know she she do need some guidance you know what i'm saying with with understanding that industry because you can get find yourself in, in some crazy situations um like i tell you about like i had made it was probably more than like i was so financially illiterate that uh i had at one point i had counted I had fifty thousand dollars. My y'all was on the phone. He was, I was on the phone, and the guy was like talking to somebody on the phone. He was like, "Yo, what you doing?" I'm like, "I got my money," because he'd be going, "What?" You know what I'm saying? So I, I and throughout the whole, we've been on the phone for like hours. So he was like, "Yo, what you you still count your money?" I'm like, "Yo, mind your business." So in that one in that one setting, I had uh, fifty thousand dollars, and that was not at the end of the year. So, um, and, you know, I didn't do anything with the money. So, which is unfortunate, but my point is, is that you know you can make a lot of money, but there's a lot of do's and don'ts in. And whatnot. So anyway, so I did that. Uh, so being in the sex industry, I became an exotic dancer. Uh, then from that, I was a, uh, I host swinger parties. Uh, I would get, you know, hired to host like different, like I wasn't me actually having the, the parties. And somebody, they would hire me as the host. Cause you know, I was just, you know, I was pretty great. I was the hostess with the most. And um, I also worked on pornographic films as a stylist. People always be like, yo, what the fuck do a style? And honey, you bring the clothes and they put them I mean, on. Yeah, Wait. And they do have to have outfits and different little things depending on what type of film it is. Um, it could be a little bit of nothing or it could be like a whole set of changing clothes and looks and stuff. So I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So they, they definitely have clothes. So I did that. And I also wrote my first book. Let me tell you something. I'm so proud of myself about that, uh, which is called Quickie. It's an ebook form, it's only $1.99. <laughs> you can find on oil platforms. Um, and it took me like a whole year to write that. And actually, it's erotic fiction. It's seven short erotic stories. I was inspired by, what's the name of um, Zane? I think it was Seth. You ever read that book? I've read a lot of Zane books. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe it was, and it was the what, the one where she had, it was like a collection of short stories. So I was inspired by that. But I only wrote seven, and it took me a whole... Yo, writing a book, listen, let me tell y'all something. I mean, don't... And I'm trying not trying to discourage this. Listen, if it's in you, you need to do it. And um, But it took me a whole year to do it. I mean, because you really got to... It's some serious thought process that goes along with that. So anyway, so that's my my life as a, as a sex worker. And normally when I do say sex worker, people, just because you say sex worker, that don't mean you selling no pussy. That don't mean that... You know, and I also was... It was in the process. Remember the movie? The, I mean, the movie, the magazine, Black 
black men's mac. No, was it black tail? Girl went to this. Went. I was thinking. Wait, let me back up some more. Why my mother asked me? Yo, so the guy. Your parents know who the fuck you are. My mother asked me when I was like in the. Damn, I could have been in middle school. She said, "Would you pose new without even answering? Without even a blink of an eye? Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> sure would." And um, so anyway, the opportunity came when I came here to New York and uh, met up with the guy and, you know, they, you know, so I was just so happened I was on my period. So he was like, yo, let me see. And I was like, um, I mean, I'll come down to my underwear, but I'm like, he's like, no, you have to take everything off. Did you not hear I'm on my period? Like that grossed me all the way the fuck out to where I was just like, no, I'm definitely not engaging in that. So I, I, I didn't do that. Um, I did also have an OnlyFans. This is recent. Um, what type but of content you post on your OnlyFans? It, it was sexual. Okay. Definitely sexual. I used to write stories, and the guys really liked the stories. Like, they, they would really be engaged. You know what I'm saying? So, actually, like, I would put, instead of, like, a fictional char- character, it would be me. Like, and, mm-hmm. and you know, and I was, yeah, you know, and, and they would use themselves as the, as the fictional character with me. So, they really, mm-hmm. I got, like, a lot of uh, feedback from that. And um, I also post like photos, like really sexy photos. Um, not like I did do some new, but not total news. Not no spread eagle or anything right. like that. But well, I think spread eagle is a little bit much. Um, even if you got like panties on, because you're giving it all away. It's just all of it out there. Sometimes I mean, and different folks do different things because different people have different ways they want to do their brand, but in my mindset, look, I support strippers, I support sex workers, I do think that there should be like a conscious decision to do sex work, Mm -hmm. like it shouldn't be just for the money, like have a goal in mind, have something connected to it other than the money, because the money gonna come, but the money gonna come and it's gonna go too, so my mindset um, behind, like even when I go to a strip club, my goal and a portion of my life is to be able to go into strip clubs and ask women, do you, do you want to be here? Like, you like dancing? Because, you know, if you come up in a cheerleading world or a dance world, you really don't have that many options if you don't go dance professionally. And everybody doesn't go dance professionally. So I want to give people the option to choose. Like, do you really want to do this? Or is this something you're doing because you need money? Because if I can give you the money, then go do what you really want to do and save this for the people that really like to do this. Yeah, and actually for me, I really like to do it because dancing is like, well, I know fashion and dance is something God blessed me with. So, uh, yeah, I definitely want to be there. And, you know, it's so funny that you just said that. I had guys who used to come to me and be like, you look too nice, you shouldn't be here. And uh, they'll give me applications to the pole store office. I thought they were so cute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a really nice guys that be it. Right, right, exactly. You know that was that was really nice, and I was just thinking at them like, no, like it's it's not a forced situation for me. Like I I really want to be here because I like dancing, I like entertaining, and also there is a serious art to being seductive, which took me a really long time to understand that because most girls, you know, they get up there, they get the 